Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use constraint sets and transitions to define animations for multiple views in motion layout. A constraint set is just a set of constraints, or how about a definition that doesn't use the word it's defining? A constraint set specifies the constraints for every view in a constraint layout. In constraint layout, you usually define this in line with the views using attributes like a line bottom to. In motion layout, you extract constraint sets to a separate file called a motion scene. By doing this, you can define multiple constraint sets and build animations between them. In this video, you'll learn how to convert a constraint layout to motion layout and define multiple constraint sets. You'll see how to define a transition between them. As we go, we'll explore Motion Editor, a new tool built into Android Studio to make it easy to build, modify, and preview animations built using motion layout. To get started, I've created a constraint layout file that contains a few views that we want to animate. We can convert it to motion layout by right-clicking on the design surface, then selecting Convert to Motion Layout. Now that you have a motion layout, the motion editor will open. The motion editor is an animation tool for building and previewing complex animations built with motion layout. Before we look at the motion editor, let's switch over to the XML and see what Android Studio did when we converted to motion layout. At the root, our constraint layout tag was swapped for a motion layout tag, and it also created a motion scene file and added a tag here. This is a description of the animation that Motion Layout uses. If we click into the motion scene, we can see that Android Studio created two constraint sets for us, one labeled start and one labeled end. A constraint set describes the constraints, sizes, and other attributes for all views in your layout. Here, both the start and end constraint sets are empty, so it will use the constraints from the layout. A constraint set represents a static positioning of all the views in a motion layout. This file also defined a transition. A transition is how you define an animation in motion layout. Here, we're transitioning from start to end, and it will take one second to play the animation. Motion layout will figure out a path for all views from their start to end position, and play it back when you animate through this transition. If we switch back to the motion editor, you can see that it visually represents the contents of the motion scene file in the overview panel. You can click on any of these elements to see and edit it below. For example, when we click on the motion layout, it gives us an overview of the views and their constraints in the layout XML. If you click on one of these views, you can edit its attributes in the right attributes panel. For example, we could change the constraints or any other attributes on card three in the motion layout itself. The Attributes panel always shows the attributes of the currently selected item in the Motion Editor. So, for example, if we click on the Constraint Set in the Overview panel, it will switch to the attributes for that constraint set. There's not many attributes on a constraint set itself, but this shows you how the Motion Editor is built to show a one-to-one -one mapping between XML and the controls in the Motion Editor. Let's switch back to the Start Constraint Set. And you can see in the details pane that it shows all of the views that could be constrained in this constraint set. Right now, the constraint set has no constraints on it, so it shows layout as the source for all the views. You can also select the transition. That's the arrow that's pointing from start to end in the overview panel. When you do, it opens playback controls for the animation, including a scrub bar that lets you manually seek the animation to any position. You could press play now, though, as you can see, there's nothing happening in this transition. To make this a bit more exciting, we'll have to tell Motion Layout what we want to animate. We're going to build an entrance animation. This is an animation that we want to play when the screen first opens. And this is a pretty typical way to use Motion Layout. An animation in Motion Layout is made of two constraint sets that have a transition between them. Now here, we're transitioning from start to end. Now, to keep things simple, We'll make the end use the sizes and constraints from the layout, which you can see represented here in the details section. Then, to make the animation, we'll add constraints to the start constraint set. Select the start constraint set and pick the view you want to make constraint for. Here, we'll select card one. Then, click the modify constraint set button. It looks like a small pencil. And in the pop up menu, you can create a constraint. And you can see that the details update to show this constraint comes from start instead of layout, as well as showing a check to note it's constrained in this constraint set. We'll add constraints to both card two and card three as well. 
Then, because Motion Editor isn't copying over my margins for these cards, I'll add a start, end, and bottom margin of 16 dp to each of these. Note, this is slightly tighter than the margins in the end constraint set, which will make the views appear to move up during the animation. You can preview the current state of the animation by clicking on the transition and pressing play. Let's also make the cards expand and fade in. In the Transformations Attributes section, you can specify the scale X, scale Y, and alpha. I'll apply a scale of 0.5 to both the X and the Y, and an alpha of 0. Now, the scale and alpha is set on all three cards, and our animation looks more interesting if we preview it in the transition. To finish up this animation, we'll add a subtle movement to fade in the subtitle as well. Select Space Moji Subtext, create a constraint, and then add a 10 dp translation x, and set the alpha to 0. And if you preview it again, you can see we've created a pretty rich animation with just a few constraints. Let's look at the options on the transition quickly before moving on to the XML that was generated. The transition is what actually defines the animation, and it's where you can configure the properties of the animation itself, such as the duration, interpolation, and even make it track a drag event. Since this is an entrance animation, we want to play it automatically. You can do that in Motion Editor by selecting the transition and setting Auto Transition to the value Animate to End. Now this tells Motion Layout to automatically animate from start to end. A transition also has this interesting attribute called Stagger that, well, staggers the animation. It's used for making effects where items appear right after one another. It's kind of hard to describe, so let's just set it and see what it does. Now, you can see our views animate in from the bottom, and this completes our animation, giving us a nice staggered entrance effect. Let's switch over to the XML now and see what the motion editor generated. The design of the motion editor is to provide a rich interactive GUI editor while maintaining a one-to-one -one mapping to the motion layout XML. This goes as far as the ordering of UI elements in the motion editor. They will always display in the order you define them in XML. The transition tag has the auto transition and staggered attributes that we set, as well as a default duration of 1000 set by the motion editor when we converted the layout from constraint layout. It also has a keyframe set, which we'll skip over in this video. Going down to the start transition, you can see that the constraints specified by the motion editor are complete constraints. They specify everything related to the size and positioning and some other view attributes. When you specify a constraint using this style in a motion scene file, it overwrites whatever is in the layout. So for example, if we didn't repeat the constraints on one side of the view, it would not carry over the constraints from the layout. You have to specify the full constraint for each view and that's actually a bit of code. Scrolling through here, you can see that the motion editor did a lot of heavy lifting to create this motion scene file for us. At the end of the motion scene file, the end constraint set is empty. Now, this matches what we saw in the motion editor, where all views were getting their constraints from the layout. Now, if we did edit this XML file here and add a constraint into the end constraint set, the motion editor would show us the new constraint as if it had been added by the motion editor when we went back over to the design surface. In this video, we built a simple entrance animation using only constraint sets and transitions. Along the way, you learned how to animate between multiple constraint sets using motion layout. You also learn how Motion Editor works seamlessly to build, modify, and preview animations while allowing you to quickly switch between XML and the Motion Editor. In the next video, we'll explore Motion Layout further by adding keyframes to define rich motion on the path from start to end. Now, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for notifications as soon as new episodes are published. To learn more about Motion Layout, check out the Code Lab and Motion Layout integration sample this video was based on in the links below.